Hello! Thank you very much for tuning in to this week's read. For the main part of the read of this channel, my channel is James13 Wicca. So on YouTube, that's what it should be. I think it's the same thing on Instagram, just to be fair. Um, for this installment, I'm using for the tarot Astro Matrix. There's the box. And I know that there's a website on here, it's on the back. Astromatrix.org. Feel free to freeze frame and check that out if you're interested. Supportive Oracle Cards, Magical Spell Cards by Lucy Cavendish, illustrated by Jesse Reich, and the website's at the bottom, I believe it's hayhouse.com. Hayhouse.com, yeah. And I also use dice. I use a 22-sided dice for the Major Arcana. Uh, I substitute 22 for 0 for the Fool, and I use a 14-sided dice to choose uh, for the Minor Arcana, uh, Ace through King, 14 being the King, I want to say, I'm going to say, <laughs> uh, and then a 4-sided dice to choose the Element. I, those came from, they were a gift, from MathArtFun.com. So I think you can get all those different types of dice there. Feel free to check that out if you're interested. All right, I think we're set. All right, so if you'd like a reading from me, shoot me an email, jamesforastral at gmail.com. That's james, the number four, astral at gmail.com. If you're interested in the donation information, that's below, same email. And now, on to your reading. Hello, Virgo. Thank you very much for tuning in to this week's read. Uh, these readings are valid for whenever you come to them. That being said, what do we have for Virgo? So, are you, is your card out here? I don't see the Hermit out here. The Hermit is the Virgo card. There's other Earth cards, too, that talk about other Earth signs. Like, the Hierophant talks about Taurus. I don't see that one. But Capricorn's card is the Devil, which Virgo can work with. Um, the thing is, with the Devil card, it talks about boundaries, talks about strict boundaries, and it talks about very, um, like, if those boundaries are crossed, very severe consequences. Virgo can roll with that. Virgo likes things to stay where they're supposed to stay, usually. that The base energy of Virgo is like, this is where it's supposed to be, that's where it stays. You don't color outside the lines. You stay, and you, it's not only you stay and you, you color inside the lines, you color with the appropriate color, and, you know, in, in the appropriate order. And this energy is very much that. Um, you do it my way, you do it the way I tell you to, you do it in the time I tell you to, and if you do it the way you're supposed to, the way I've told you to do it, you will get a reward. It is a very strict energy, but this is something Virgo can roll with. Um, in fact, sometimes Virgo doesn't even see it as strict. Sometimes Virgo just sees it as the rules, and the rules are the rules. Sometimes Virgo likes it because when these rules apply, they usually apply for everybody equally, and if somebody else decides they're going to do something else a little crazy... They get the repercussions, but the people who stay there where they were supposed to usually, not always, but usually are okay. Um, I remember when I was a kid, there was a manipulation tactic to where if one person on the team screwed up, the whole team suffers. And in fact, that, that manipulation tactic might still be in effect today, you know, they think about it. But um, I don't feel that for this part. Um... Five of Wands reversed. This isn't bothering you. Whatever this connection is with the devil, <clears throat> there's rules. There's a lot of rules. But I feel like this is not a new thing for you. I've worked with this before. I've succeeded with this before. When you just kind of like, when you stay out of the devil's way, the devil doesn't bother you. It's kind of feeling like that to me. But the other people who can't do that, I feel like I just dis disassociate from those people. In fact, that might be also going on here. Before you even get too knee deep in this situation, you're aware that certain people aren't going to be able to be controlled or they're not going to stay inside the lines. 
So you disassociate as much as possible. You put as much distance between you and them as you can. Um, <clears throat> you've done well with this before. Whatever this is, it does feel like a repeat in a sense. Maybe not a repeat in the total situation, but like there might be similar people or a simple, similar process here. Kind of like, yep, I've done that before. Um, it kind of reminds me of like working with electricity. Electricity has rules and... Electricity is not negotiable. Um, if, if you don't turn off their electricity and you touch a live wire, you can't negotiate yourself out of that. You're just going to pay the price for it. That's kind of how this feels. And it's ironic that it's coming up that way with this card because it's kind of like you know that. And you're like, yep. And that's why not only I check it once, I check it twice, I check it three times. I also use the appropriate locks to turn it off so somebody who just happens to walk through and thinks they can just turn things on, they, they are not able to do so. Um... I don't know a lot about electricity and how people take care of it, but I know that like on the panels, people who work with it, they'll not only turn it off, but they'll put locks on it so that people can't turn it back on. Like in, unless, they, unless the right person comes back and takes the lock off of it. Um, so it, it's like a safety procedure. Like you do all the safety procedures. You know what you're supposed to do. You protect yourself against other people not following the rules and causing you know danger for you. The situation does feel a lot electri like electricity to me. It's kind of like it's not forgiving. You follow the rules or you pay the price. It's that, and that's just all that there is to it. Um, very much like electricity in my opinion. And there's things going forward. There's a lot of things that are coming towards you, and I'm getting that with the two of wands. But as they're coming forward towards that, or as you're coming forward, you're like, all right, I'm making my peace with it. There's a lot coming towards me. And there, I'm, I'm able to do it all. I just got to put it in order. Are you putting it in order? I do feel you're doing that. Um, that. That two of fire coming in, the two of wands. Is it the two? Yeah. A lot coming in at once, but I'm also getting like I'm taking it very seriously with the death card, and I'm owning it. <clears throat> Whatever it was before, it can't be that anymore. Um, <clears throat> however, I know that this has strict rules. I have to take it apart and put it together my way, and I'm going to own it. I'm getting that with the death card too. Like you're going to own it. Like Maybe you haven't been in the position to own it before, but you know where you're taking it. Um, Death card can talk about Scorpio energy. You could be dealing with a Scorpio energy here. Um, Virgo is compatible with Scorpio base and, and the base energy. This might be something where you're like saying to this other person, you know what, I'll take responsibility for all these parts and I'll handle all these parts. Um, I'll let you know when they're done so you can do your part. Um, that death card, I, I feel like there's something more with that death card because it's like a whole new situation coming in because it's being followed up by the world card. Like It's almost like the death card feels like a preparation. Four of swords, half in, half out. Things can go very well. And the high priestess, half in, half out. This is an opportunity for you to put things in order. This is going to set the stage for how things are going to go. Um, it feels like preparation to me. It really does, which is kind of like, and there's communication here, so you're doing what you need to do. I feel like with the harvest coming in and the death card at the same time, the harvest is right here. Um, there's long-term goals, but there's like when I'm going into it, I have to prepare it so that I can do this long haul. It's not just a short situation. So it's almost like, you know, winter has passed. I haven't done this before, but I know the rules. I haven't done it here before. I know the things I got to gather. But I'm gathering it and like, I'm going to do this for the next five years. So I'm getting my supplies together, but it's not just supplies I'm going to use just this year. So I'm kind of like, I need the right supplies. I need good supplies. I need ones that are going to last me five years so I don't have to get them again. Because um, you got the world card coming out after this. I do kind of, I keep feeling that. Because the death card talks about, you know, the ending leading to a beginning. So it could be like ending some type of social connection for you for other things. Because your life is going to be a little bit busier now. So it might be changing your social status in the sense of like, I can't participate in certain things anymore because I'm not going to have the time to. It might be changing your schedule a bit. So like if you used to have time in the afternoon, maybe this is something that's taking up the time in the afternoon you used to have, that type of thing. It does seem to creating be creating a big change. Um, and I'm getting the Ace of Swords. Like it's something you have to think out and plan out and you got to put in order the way you need to. Uh, making good decisions, making long-term decisions. Because I'm getting it, I keep feeling like with the Destiny card too, I get like long term things going. Like, it's like I'm not just planning for like one season, I'm planning for the next five. And like, so like growing season like every year, like five years going out. Um, 
those long-term plans here, <clears throat> you're putting a lot of thought into it. This is something you're naturally going to do. You're very optimistic about it, too. Mostly because they feel like I, I have resources to pull on. I have resources to, like, it's kind of like, maybe I don't know exactly how to do this, but I have people I can get to, to teach me, people who are trained, people who clearly know what they're doing, and I can get trained by them, and I know that I can ask them questions. I can get the proper training, and I can lock that in. I know I can trust myself. Once I know the correct way to do it, I don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, very optimistic energy. Very good. Very good. Something unexpected. Um, you're also, you are getting help here, but the help is only going to last so long. Um, you're getting very stable help, but keep that in mind. Uh, this is one of those things where I would equate it to like a job and it's like, um, it's like somebody teaching you a job. I've had this, I've done this before. Um, where, you know, it's going to be like maybe a six-week six training course, just for argument's sake. But I remember thinking to myself, like, this person's really busy. So I need to, ch I, the way I went into it, I was like, my mentality was, I need to learn it as much as possible and, like, keep reiterating it in my mind so that I know as much as possible while they're literally just right here. Because once we're out on the floor, while they are willing to help, there's going to be 15 other people that are going to be pulling them left and right, and it's going to make things really complicated. So I remember going into it like every day I would look at it and I would write my notes like as if I had to depend on my notes, like as if that person wasn't going to be there. So I put all the notes down and every time I would do things in class, I would try to just, just use my notes and try to see how far I could get and try to succeed that way. And I did really well. I mean, I did really good notes. So and I, I learned it in that sense. Like even though I could ask, I learned it as if I wasn't going to be able to ask after, you know what I mean? And with this energy coming in, somebody is helping you, but that person, I feel when I get the Seven of Cups and the Eight of Cups, they have other things they're going to be chasing down. Either they're not going to be very available or they might not be available at all, even though they might plan to be. So learn it as if you learn it as if when they're teaching you stuff, that's the only time you're going to be able to ask questions and really write your notes or put your put things down and learn it as if, you know, I'm not going to get a chance to ask again. Because you do have the world coming in. Whatever the situation is, you're going to end up owning it. Um, the preparation, it's not just like I'm preparing to do this for the next five years. You're going to be leading it. And I don't feel like you're going to be planning to. Um, I do feel like you're going to be leading it. I don't know that you're going to be planning to, though. Can I just roll that? Maybe you are, but depends on your situation. Knight of Cups and the Justice card. The Justice card is coming half in, half out. You can do it. You can clearly do it. And I don't know. I didn't. F I feel like maybe I was going to take the lead, but I didn't think I was going to be the only lead, if, if that makes sense. I, I thought I was going to be in control of some of it and have people to lean back on, but I don't have anybody to lean, lean back on. It's totally me. Um, make sure that you're social during this time. Be careful not to block yourself out and just work on your situation because if you do that, you're going to diminish your return. You're going to get a diminished response. Um, this can flourish. This can be a great abundance. It's kind of like if you just take care of yourself in this situation, it's kind of like, uh, I have beans, I have water, I can live. Uh, you'll succeed. So it's like I'm getting beans and water, beans and water, and that's all I can have. If I work with other people and I'm more social, it's like I have a buffet with a whole bunch of things. It's like it's not just beans and water. It's like I got milk, I got juice, I got pastries, I got you know I got it. It greatly difference. Like the difference between su surviving just on beans and water, which you I guess you can do. Like why not beans and water, beans and water, beans and water versus um, having this buffet of all these different things you could have that you really do like. It doesn't get boring. Um, there's a lot, and there's a lot more of it. It's kind of like if I had beans and water, there's only a certain amount of beans and I have to ration it out. If I pull everybody in and I keep connected with everybody and I look out for everybody, um, you're going to have a much, much, much better return. You're going to be a lot happier. Um, I feel like my first knee jerk reaction is like, I don't really want to be responsible for all these people. But when you look out for others, they look out for you in this situation. And I feel like I feel like there's going to be like that air of like, you know, I'll look out for you. You look out for me, look out for each other. You know, I'll, let's all look out for each other. Let's, you know, try, try to help each other. I'll do what I can, but like everybody looks out for everybody. 
I look out for you, you look out for me, I look out for you, please keep an eye on that for me too. Like, I know you don't like person three, so it's like, you're person one, person two, I'll look out for you, I know you don't like person three, two, person two. But, um, if you keep an, if you just let me know if something goes wonky, I'll take care of it, just keep your eye on that, please. That type of thing, that might be going on there too. Um, the situation is offering a lot of healing. I feel like for you, it could be for others too, but like, it, if some of you have like a self-esteem issue or like, you know, you're worried about your reputation for some reason, this will be healing for you because you'll realize that people respect you and that things do move forward the way you need it to. It could be a very healing thing for you especially. This is going to also be one of those things where you're not always going to want to be in the lead, but it's like once you're there, you're there. Um, opportunities will come out of this. I keep getting like that five-year plan. So it's like you know this is going to last however it's going to last. So going into it, like you know how long it's going to last is what I'm getting. Um, and you're not always going to want it, but you're going to be able to do it. You have more than enough strength to do it. And you're going to have opportunities come near the end that are going to give you better, better options. Um, you're definitely safe here and you're making this situation a safe situation. So I don't feel like there's anything dangerous here for you. But I do feel like every now and then I feel, again, like working with electricity. It's kind of like... Maybe I have to keep an eye on certain people because they don't understand, like, how unforgiving electricity is because some people don't. Because some people don't. Um, it's kind of like some people swim with sharks, and I just think I think that's crazy personally. But, you know, everybody's got their thing. I think I, I do, especially tiger sharks. I believe the tiger sharks are the most dangerous. Could be wrong with that. Um, but it's kind of like, you know, um, listen, people, let's not play with this. You might think you know what's going on, but these are wild animals. That's not – they're wild – you know, let's not do that. You might have to police people every once in a while because you're making the situation safe for everybody. But I feel like that's the biggest stress of it, kind of like I have to get people to follow the safety rules. <laughs> but you definitely will get through this. It will be fine. And you will have new opportunities at the end. Think about that as you're going through this situation. So if it was, a, for example, a five-year plan, every now and then just ask yourself, what do you want at the end of these five years? What, do you, what would you like to happen for you at the end of these five years? Because you'd be surprised that wish could be granted. I don't usually see this as a wish card. Some people do. Uh, I see like this is opportunity coming your way is what I'm seeing. But it's like by you going through it, thinking about what you want, and then talking about it with the right people every now and then, opportunity that you're looking for could come your way. But you want to like think about it to yourself. For example, if it was a five-year plan, especially the first couple of years, kind of like as things are coming together, what would you prefer? What would you like? Once the situation's over, what would you like for yourself? And then talk about that with the appropriate people in the way you want to, and after the five years have passed, that opportunity will show up for you. Keep that in mind as well. All right, I think we're there. I'm going to shut this down here. Thank you for watching. If you'd like a direct reading from me, shoot me an email, jamesforastral at gmail.com. That's james, the number four, astral at gmail.com. If you're interested in the donation information, that's below. Same email. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.